Hi, thank you for tuning in and welcome to my jewelry design studio. First and foremost, if you are one of my subscribers or regular viewers, I want to apologize for the huge lapse in time between my last video and this one, especially after I said I would try to film more regularly. I'm just going to be real and tell you it is a little bit harder to film all the time now that I'm really out here on my own rebuilding my life and rebuilding my business because while I used to be singularly focused on social media output like how many videos I did in a day or how many posts I did on Instagram my main focus now is just getting rooted back into this reality once again and while that takes time and it's a process for everyone I don't want to neglect you and I want to thank you because really you my viewers are what helped me establish myself in the career of my dreams which is being self-employed through making jewelry I've mentioned this in previous videos and I still believe it absolutely 100% and that's that when we find something that we are passionate about when we really love to do something there will always be others out there who share that appreciation. If someone has a beautiful singing voice and they love making songs, there will always be an audience ready to listen to them. If someone excels at creative writing and just has oodles of stories coming out of their minds, there will be people ready to buy and read their books. Whether what you love to do has to do with fitness or exploration or making recipes, making delicious food, or whether like me you're into jewelry and art and drawing, whatever it might be, there will always be somebody you know, who's interested, who wants to see what you're doing next. And it's just like everybody says whenever someone wins an award, they'll always say that they wouldn't have gotten to where they are if it weren't for the people who appreciate what they do for their fans. And likewise, every single time I check my Etsy store, whenever I get a sale, whenever I upload a new item, I just feel this heartfelt gratitude for you, for all of my YouTube viewers, because really it's through YouTube that that business was born. Now, I'd like to go back in time for a moment and tell you a little bit about how I actually started my Etsy shop because I think that might be a little inspirational for anyone else who wants to start their own store but maybe feels that there's like a roadblock or that there's something just preventing the sales from happening. And that is to say, when I started my Etsy shop, it wasn't a jewelry store. It was actually a store where I sold hand-painted scarves like this one that I'm holding right now. So this vegan fabric scarf. I made sure never to use silk, only artificial silk, because I believe strongly in animal rights and the lives of silkworms are no less valuable than the lives of any other breeding sentient being. So I used these artificial fabrics, painted them up like here with this gold fabric paint, and listed them for sale as vegan hand-painted fashion accessories. I was so excited. I invested tons of my savings into buying those fabrics, into high-end fabric paints, into brushes. I turned one of the bedrooms in my mom's basement into a makeshift art studio, you know, covered the floor with plastic and just got busy until I had made about 25, maybe 30 scarves. And then I took pictures of all of them, uploaded them into Etsy, started my account and waited for the sales to happen and waited and waited and waited and waited and after maybe like two or three weeks not a single scarf had sold and for a little while there I felt crushed like one of my absolute favorite things to do in the world is draw and paint and one of my other passions, something that I have a lot of fun with, is fashion. I love reading fashion magazines. I like looking at pictures of, you know, pretty dresses and pretty accessories. I like to dress up. So when I thought that I could combine these two passions and make them into an Etsy store and live, you know, earn a living doing what I love, when it didn't immediately get successful, of course I felt disappointed. And this is something that I hear in comments and in private messages from so many people 
they feel a huge disappointment when they jump into their passion thinking that they've found the solution to earn a living doing what they love and people don't immediately respond. So common next step would be what? To pull the shop, to get a day job, to go back into you know, the mode of working for somebody else. And that's what I started to do. I started making up a resume. But on some level, I still felt like I wanted to make things and use my creativity and make a living doing that. So one day, right before I really threw in the towel and let all of my listings expire, which means basically let the store close on its own, I started thinking about what else I love to do, what else I've always enjoyed. And back when I was a little kid, I used to love making jewelry, especially out of gemstones. My mom bought me this set for Christmas once called Geo Jewelry, and it had different gemstone bead chips, like amethyst chips, turquoise chips, carnelian chips, you know, colorful stones, with some wires and other stringing materials. And I used to make earrings and necklaces out of these. Then later when I was living in Vancouver, I started making a little bit fancier kind of crystal and gemstone jewelry designs just because I got into the healing properties of stones. And I didn't do too badly selling those on consignment at some of the shops throughout the city. And so I was thinking, instead of just focusing exclusively on hand-painted vegan scarves, which is kind of like a niche category to say the least, why not try making jewelry and selling that on Etsy once again? Now, the quote-unquote experts all said starting a handmade jewelry store on Etsy is basically the worst idea a business person can have because the market is saturated. There are hundreds of these stores. But even still, I felt such an excitement about my jewels that I went into it anyway. I didn't make the same mistake I had made with the scarves, of putting in a huge cash investment once again. Instead, what I did was I dug through all my old boxes of stuff and found the remaining beads that I had had left over from the last time I had been making jewelry. And I put together about 10 bracelets, you know, a couple of designs for guys, a couple of designs for kids, a few designs for ladies. And I made sure that each piece was something I would personally wear, something that I found beautiful using stones that felt positive in their energy. I went into my backyard. I took very, very bad pictures of all of these bracelets and I loaded them up onto the Etsy site. The next day when I checked my store, it had sold out. Every single bracelet had sold. I took the money that I made from those sales and with that, I invested in some higher end beads, you know, some fancier hand cut lapis lazuli gems, a few really chunky cut amethyst stones, some really, really pretty bright, bright Amazonite, like the earrings I'm wearing today, which are, of course, a design that I made for my shop. And I started making more and more jewelry. And to my great excitement, the sales just kept flooding in. And then it started to turn into a space where I had an actual business on my hands, not just a side job, not just something to do for fun for extra money, but something that could actually pay rent and put food on the table and keep clothes on my back. So I started taking a percentage of my monthly income, using that to invest in more supplies, more stringing materials, books about jewelry techniques like this gorgeous one sitting next to me here called Jewelry Concepts and Technology. I started researching about the history of jewelry, like in this cool museum book here, 7,000 Years of Jewelry. And I basically made that into my full-time job. And so what I wanna share first and foremost in this video, if you absolutely love to do something, jump into it and try. But if it doesn't immediately succeed, find another way to do it. Find another creative outlet. Keep going, don't ever give up. Because when you have the will to achieve success, you definitely can achieve it, as long as you just keep going and don't feel crushed if success isn't instant. With that said, I want to share some of the collection that I have now in my Etsy shop. I've 
put almost all the inventory into this jewelry box right here. And I'm excited about these pieces because I've kept to the principle with which I started making these jewels, and that is to only sell pieces that I would personally wear. Now while that might sound a little bit silly because a lot of people have the experience of working in say a clothing store or a shoe store or a jewelry shop where they sell tons of stuff that they wouldn't be caught dead wearing themselves. Why is it that I would only make pieces I'd personally wear? It's because I like to really truly stand by the products. Now, I love wearing jewelry. I love the talismanic properties of different gems. I love the symbology of the different color combinations. I love the history of beading. Fun fact, did you know the oldest, most ancient prehistoric form of art discovered by anthropologists and paleontologists on planet Earth is beaded jewelry. Neolithic humans, before they started doing cave paintings, before they started you know, stringing materials together into musical instruments. What they've actually discovered in so many dig sites is that they were ornamenting their bodies with beads. They used a lot of organic materials like holes drilled in nuts and seeds and shells and even temporary things like flower garlands and berries. But the desire to ornament the body and to wear something of personal significance and value is something like inborn into us as a human species. For me, this cultural unity that shows almost every type of human being on planet Earth at some point in time feeling a desire for ornamentation, for adornment, it's something so beautifully unifying and I just feel grateful and thrilled to be a part of that long ancient process that's been going on here on planet Earth. So anyhow, this most ancient form of art is something that keeps getting updated with every generation and maybe in upcoming videos I'll share a little bit more about that. I think I've got maybe 10 to 15 books about jewelry, history, different cultures, interpretations of ornamentation, who wears what and why. I find that totally interesting but maybe that's a topic for another video. Meanwhile, let's get into it and now I'd like to share with you the contents of my Etsy shop, what I've actually built up. Now, if you are planning to start your own shop, do not by any means feel intimidated. A lot of the experts tell you, don't start an Etsy store until you have at least 200 items because people need lots to browse through. I'd say that's not entirely true. When I started my shop, I had about 20 hand-painted scarves, they didn't sell. When I took the jump from scarves into jewelry, I had only a handful of bracelets. Despite the fact that it was less quantity than they say you need for your inventory, it did well anyway. As it built up and built up and built up, it started doing better and better and better. But remember, everyone has to start somewhere. So even if you have just five things that you've made that you're proud of, that you wanna put out there into the world, I'd say go for it. So let me just pick the camera up and take you over to the top of this jewelry box and show you the first bit of my collection here. So let's see if I can focus this properly. We've got a bunch of beaded rings. I make these rings almost the same way that I would make bracelets. I use the finest, by fine I mean like thinnest, tiniest beads that I can find to make the body of these rings. And I also use a kind of string that's tested with 40 pounds of weight resistance. What that basically means is no matter how heavy these beads are or how hard you yank on the ring when you're putting it on or taking it off, the string's not going to break. So this one is made with orange carnelian citrine and a stone called chrysoprase, which is a really cool Chinese stone, similar in properties to jade, but in a very, very pale, kind of a light green color. I've also put in this top of the jewelry box some earrings that I've put Herkimer quartz with copper onto. Herkimer quartz is known as a stone with a very strong energetic property because it's double terminated, meaning the crystal is pointy at both ends, not just one. The energy that it radiates goes in multiple directions. 
So putting those on hoop earrings, it's not just a statement to look pretty, it also disperses that energy in multiple directions. I keep that next to one of my favorite little talismans here, an amethyst and moldavite pendant. We've also got here some earrings with the chakra stones. In descending order, it's amethyst, tanzanite, amazonite, peridot, citrine, carnelian, and garnet. And even though it's colorful and beautiful, the purpose of these kinds of chakra stones, it's not just to look pretty, it's not meant to be a rainbow. Actually, each of these stones resonates with the energy of different parts within the human spinal column. It's said that when we wear these in that order from the purple down to the red, the full color spectrum, it keeps us in energetic alignment. It helps us stay balanced throughout the day, not getting shaken, not feeling a little bit overwhelmed by life as people sometimes tend to do. I've also got in here some bangle bracelets that have been totally, totally covered with gems and some of my favorite bracelets that have clasps instead of just being stretchy. So here we've got the chakra gems with moonstone. We've got moonstone and sunstone representing balance between day and night, light and dark, masculine and feminine. This one, sunstone with chrysoprase and tanzanite, some very high-end gems. Chakra gems, but with lots and lots of beads instead of just one of each color. And some of the statement earrings. One of my favorites are these ones here. They are pre-night, whoops, with kind of orbiting hoops. And what I like about this style is that it fits with the hoop trend while still letting you adorn yourself using sacred gemstones. I also made a pair of earrings using hoops and amethyst, ametrine, and citrine, which are all forms of quartz that really energetically keep us in creative balance and spiritual balance. Amethyst is known as being one of the gems for spiritual purification, for overcoming addiction, for self-healing, while citrine is known as a gem for manifestation, for creativity, for getting our ideas and passions into actualization. When we wear both of them together, it gives us kind of the best of both worlds. And ametrine, it's just such a cool stone because it's a single gem that has both amethyst and citrine in one. Anyhow, that's the top, whoops, top layer of this jewelry box. Has almost all the different pairs of earrings. Here's a cool aquamarine pair. Here's a nice pair with some colorful fluorite. Here's a nice pair with citrine and lapis lazuli and amazonite. Anyhow, when something sells from my shop, it's almost a ritual that the first thing that I do is come to this box, find the piece that's sold, put it into a nice little baggie, and say a prayer that whoever wears that piece will experience the best possible journey in life whenever they wear it. In the next drawer, I've put all the pendants. And this is kind of a fun drawer because these are like the gemstone talismans. We have everything from chunky, faceted green fluorite, which is a stone great for students. It's known to help with study, with memorization, with information, with retention, with cognitive processing. And it's a stone that's been known by crystal healers to balance left and right brain. So if you need to be creative and also analytical, it's a really cool gem to keep in your collection. In the same little part of the drawer. I've put one of my all-time favorites. This one is a piece of fancy Labradorite. I'm not sure if you can see the Labradorescence in this lighting, but it is such a gorgeous stone because when the light hits it from different angles, it radiates a really, really cool, what they call Labradorescence or Chateauyance, which means that the stone actually diffuses light changing color. So it goes everywhere from blue to green to purple to a bright golden yellow. And in the same drawer I've got rose quartz, a stone of love. This one, 
tektite with sunstone and moonstone. Tektite is a really cool gem, kind of like moldavite, and it's formed by the impact of a meteorite when it strikes the surface of the earth. I made a whole video just about that stone. Celestite, which is said to help its wearer communicate with angels and get in touch with that divine realm. This one here, blue kyanite, a stone for strengthening the third eye and communication through nonverbal means. Anyhow, all the pendants, whoops, there they go. Surprisingly tricky to try to balance the camera and these drawers at the same time, so bear with me, guys. In the next drawer, I've put the stretchy bracelets. So here we've got things like pink lapidolite with rose quartz, rose quartz with all different stones like peridot, amethyst, chrysocolla, lapis lazuli. Whenever we wear rose quartz, it's known to strengthen the heart chakra and bring us into a space of heightened compassion and love for others. I recommend that stone as a gift for anyone who's really looking to deepen their love life. And I'm not just talking about romance, but also the love between parents and children, the love between friends, the love between family members. It's such a sweet energy stone, really everyone should have some. I made a stacking set of bracelets with clear quartz and the chakra stones. And it's a neat set because they can be worn individually or broken up and worn one at a time. And I've also combined some of my favorite high-end stones, like this one here, Neon Blue Appetite, which is just such a juicy shade of blue with chrysoprase and faceted amethyst, as well as some really sweet little stacking bracelets, Oops, like this one here that's made using gold-plated brass beads with Herkimer quartz diamonds. It's delicate, it's fragile looking, but it's stronger than it looks. Some people have asked me how to keep the gold-plated brass looking shiny, because sometimes when that gold plating wears off, it looks dull and a little bit dingy. One of my favorite, favorite tricks for that, keeping gold-plated brass shiny, is to paint it with a layer of animal-friendly, cruelty-free clear nail polish. Because that clear nail polish seals it in. So if you live in a humid climate or a really hot place where the gold-plated brass doesn't stay as shiny and golden as it does here, once you've put that clear nail polish on, it seals it in so it stays nice and bright. Another cool thing about that is that if you have a metal allergy, a lot of people say they can't wear costume jewelry because they're allergic to those fake metals, that coating gives it a barrier between the metal and your skin so you won't have the allergic reaction. I don't recommend it for earring posts because once it kind of chips or flakes away, you might still experience some sensitivity, but for bracelets, necklaces, pendants, and rings, it's a really good solution. Anyhow, the next drawer down is where I keep the chunky beaded bracelets, like this one here that matches the necklace I'm wearing today, which is amethyst, ametrine, and citrine. I love that necklace so much, I made one for the shop, one for myself and chunky beads like these ones here, black obsidian that I've paired with pink lapidolite. This one here, moss agate, a great stone for connecting with nature and opening the heart. Some bigger rose quartz pieces, another chakra piece just because I love those beautiful chakra colors. And one of my all-time favorites, I'm actually shocked that this piece is still around and hasn't sold yet is this ametrine bracelet here, made with some of the chunkiest, most stunning, hand-faceted ametrine, citrine, amethyst beads I've ever found. What I love about this bracelet is just the fact that the beads are so, so striking in the color change. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but the one that I'm holding right now has a clear distinctive line between the amethyst and the citrine, between that purple and that yellow. And the fact that they're hand faceted means no two are alike. So when you wear that kind of a piece, like with anything in my shop really, you know you have something that's one of a kind. Nobody else has anything exactly like it. So in the next drawer I've put 
some of the short necklaces using rare stones, like this one here, with an unbelievable zincite cluster. I searched and searched for zincite actually because I had a custom order. Somebody wanted a zincite bracelet and couldn't find it anywhere. When I searched, I saw she was right. I also couldn't find zincite jewelry anywhere. And finally, I found a beautiful little crystal shop in the US that was selling two zincite clusters, a pair of zincite clusters. So I bought them both, made a bracelet for her, and this necklace for the shop that's using zincite paired with beautiful, tiny little faceted beads. I'm trying to get a good close up here of garnet. And these stones are both known for strengthening physical endurance, stamina, and the energy to succeed, especially when it comes to physical endeavors like racing, running, um, beating your own best at any kind of endurance sport. This one here combines andalusite with tanzanite and again that unbelievable neon blue appetite. I just love that color. Here's one. I mean, if I stopped and showed every single piece and described every single piece, this video would last hours. I just kind of want to give you a sneak peek at the inventory. But anyhow, this one here with one of my all-time favorite hand-cut lapis lazuli beads using a naturally included quartz that has kind of blue and green spots. It looks even more beautiful in person because each of these spots is something that you can just stare at and see different things and just like when you look at a piece of abstract art everyone will see something different in it the same way when we look at naturally formed crystals and stone markings everyone will see something different in it here's one of my favorite necklaces it is blue lace agate a stone for strengthening the voice strengthening our ability to speak clearly communication skills paired with citrine Again, that beautiful gem for the will. This one here is a necklace that can also be worn as a wrap bracelet using purple fluorite, the palest, lightest ametrine, clear quartz, and Herkimer crystals. And this one I made with silver-plated brass instead of gold-plated brass, just for another style. Some people prefer the look of silver. And actually, if there's anything in the shop that you'd like to wear, but you're more into silver than gold, you can always send me a custom request and I'll make something just for you. I can make it like any of your favorite items, but use silver instead of gold. Anyhow, nice long necklace with chrysoprase. Here, my absolute favorite necklace of all time. Like I said, I loved it so much. I made one for myself too, using amethyst beads, ametrine and also citrine and I've blended this in a way that the amethyst is kind of gradiated from darkest in the center to lighter to the yellow citrine and then back again and that way when the light catches it it gives kind of that rainbow of purple and yellow effect so there we have it that's the inventory for all my women's gemstone jewelry and just so the guys don't feel left out, I want to show you, I keep all the men's jewelry in a separate trunk. Let me just lift it up here on top of the other jewelry box. And as of now, these are the men's bracelet styles. So this collection is going to grow and grow because I keep getting messages from men asking for more jewelry options for them. It's really a cool trend that's taking off. Guys are starting to wear more and more bracelets. And I feel like guys should have the same options girls have when it comes to gemstones and jewelry and talismans. So I'm designing the line in a way that gives a little bit more color than men's jewelry usually gives, using stones like rainbow fluorite and Iolite, the blue stone known as the Stone of the Mystic. This one here, Chrysocola, the Stone of Sacred Sound, perfect for a musician. Paired with clear quartz and tectite. Stones like this one here with Serpentine, that's great for personal energy, connecting with nature. A lot of the pieces use obsidian and lava rock 
because those are stones that have become really popular in menswear. They're also stones known for their grounding ability and for creating something like psychic protection, the same reason somebody would wear the evil eye charm or the hand of Fatima. This kind of psychic protection basically means it's a piece that someone wears in order to feel protected from maybe the jealousy of others or the negative intentions of others. So whether you wear it for those talismanic properties or because you just love the way the stones look, I think it's always cool to invest in natural stone jewelry because it's something that has been valued by human beings from time you know, immemorial and will always be something that we love to pass down to future generations, something that's a conversation piece. And yeah, like I said at the beginning of the video, I just feel so grateful and excited to be able to be a part of this ongoing tradition of ornamentation and jewelry design. And like I said, if you were thinking of starting your own shop, all the best in that. My prayer is for you to succeed. And if you have any questions, if you'd like some tips, or if there's anything else you'd like to know, say for example, like the design process or shipping process, Maybe I'll do a series of videos on how I run my Etsy store because I think, like I said, it's a cool thing that a lot of people can do. And anyhow, that's about it. Thank you for tuning in. Maybe the last thing I'll show you in this video is you might have been wondering about the art behind me all this time. This painting here I've already shown in one video, but what I'm displaying above it, whoops, is one of my latest black and white drawings that I'm filling in with watercolor. So if you've seen me mention that I'll be working on a new coloring book in one of my recent videos, that is still on the go. That's still a process in the works. You can see right there, I've got a printer, scanner, copier with piles and piles of abstract drawings below it. So let's see. It's good to always stay creative and I would love to hear about some of your creative projects and what you guys do for fun and what you guys do for money and what you are thinking of doing if you're thinking of starting your own shop. Anyhow, thank you so much for tuning in. And at the end of all this, if you'd like to visit my shop, I'll put the link in the video description below. And if you mention this video, I will send you two free gifts. They will be a total, total surprise just as a thank you so much for watching and for your support. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.